Maybe some of you have experienced this in your life. You're a seeker. You don't have a relationship with God and you're living life the world's way. You're genuinely trying to find out if God is real, but you keep making excuses. When you make an excuse, when you say, God, I'm not ready, I don't have all the answers, God doesn't back up and say, that's a good excuse, I'll leave you alone. Listen when I say this. God is a relentless lover of your soul. He is not going to stop coming after you. He is relentless. He will not stop. You might have great excuses. You might have great excuses why you stay spiritually sick, but those excuses don't work with God because He's after you. He wants you to be His child. Some of you are saying, I am His child. The Bible tells us that we are only His child after we've said yes to Him. Everybody born into the world is God's creation, but we don't become a child of God until we say yes to Him. And He wants that relationship with you. And He is going to pursue you. I have three little kids. If my kids get lost, if they get distant from me, I'm not going to give up looking for them. Let's say I get a call from my 14-year-old and Kenan says, I'm having a really good time down the street at Chris's house. I don't think I want to come home anymore. I just want to live here. Do I think to myself, all right, that's a good excuse. He's having a good time. I'm going to back off. No. I'm going to go straight to Chris's house. And I'm going to bring Kenan home. Because that's what God is going to do to each one of us. He's going to come straight to where you are. Because He is a relentless lover of your soul. Number three. Our first steps after being changed are very important steps. Our first steps after being changed, are very important steps. Notice what happened when Jesus healed this guy. It says, instantly the man was healed, he rolled up his mat, and he began walking. This is a question to some of you who are Christians. And if you're a seeker and you're not a Christian yet, I want you to listen to this. When you became a Christian, what did you do? What were your first steps? Did you walk away from a sick friend? Did you not go out and share people or share with people what your decision was? I think it's like this sometimes. Somebody's a seeker living the world's way. And they accept Christ and they develop a relationship with Him. And they step across that line to say yes to God's way. But sometimes their first steps are back into their old lifestyle. They say, I'm a Christian now, but I'm going to live my way. I think one of the things that we can learn is that our first steps after being changed are our most important steps. Do you walk away from your sick friends? Do you walk away from those who might need to be pointed to the healer? Or do you go after them? and tell them how they can be healed. How do we personalize this? How do we make this different? How does this apply to you right now? Number one, everybody in here needs to answer life's primary question. The same question Jesus asked this guy at the pool 2,000 years ago, I believe he's going to ask us today, do you want to get well? There are all kinds of people here this morning. The question is for all of us. No matter where we are in life's journey, do you want to get well? For the seeker, you're spiritually paralyzed. And Jesus is asking you that question. Do you want to get well? So how do you answer that? Several years ago, I was working with a guy at the fire department. We had been working together for a few years before I rededicated my life to Christ. One day we were outside in the parking lot and we were playing baseball. We had a plastic bat and a wiffle ball and we used to love to go out there and play. And I was telling him about my experiences and my rededication and I was telling him about my church. And he looked at me and he said, you want to talk about God, that's fine, but I don't have a need. 
So I said, okay, you don't have a need. Then you don't have a need. And we kept on playing. And I can remember thinking to myself, Lord, let me hit this wiffle ball back at him as hard as I can. (laughs) We continued to play. And we played all the time. And as we continued to play, he would ask me a question about my church or he'd ask me a question about God. And as I would start to answer him, he'd say, "Ah, you want to talk about church, but I don't have a need. And this this happened a couple of different times. And then finally, the last time that this happened, and he said, I don't want to talk about church. I don't have a need. I looked at him and I said, you know, somebody that's asking all these questions about God, maybe you do have a need. And then he said, yeah, I'm starting to think about that. So he and I sat down and we talked. We talked about my relationship with Christ. We talked about where he stood with Christ. And he realized that he was spiritually paralyzed. Maybe that's something that's going on in your life. Do you want to get well? If you're a stumbler, I think you're spiritually stressed out. And that's your sickness. You're just stressed out. Stressed out with your non-Christian friends. When you're out with them, you live the non-Christian way. You live the world's way. When you're with your Christian friends, you act like a Christian. You go back and forth and back and forth and it creates stress. There's not a person in this room that would look at me and say, I love being stressed. We hate stress. But when we stumble, there's this stretch that's going on in our lives. God doesn't want you to be stretched. God doesn't want you to be stressed. God is asking you, do you want to get well? For some of us in here that are sold out, He's asking us the question, do you want to get well? Because my guess is that there's some area in our lives, even though we're fully sold out and devoted to Christ, There's some area that needs to be tweaked. There's some area that needs to be fine-tuned. Something that needs to be strengthened. Remember, we're a piece of clay on the potter's wheel. And God's trying to make us in the image and likeness of Christ. But there's just something keeping us back. Do you want to get well? I don't know what it is for you. But I do know that God knows what it is. That's the primary question. No matter where you are in your faith journey, do you want to get well? Number two, you allow Jesus to be part of that change process. You allow Jesus to be part of that change process. If you keep going in the direction that you're going, you're not going to get any better. A miracle is this divine intervention where God comes into your life and He wants to be a part of that change process. I don't know what it is in your life that you need help with, but asking God should be a part of it. Remember when I said last week that nothing is too big for God and nothing is too small for God. For probably three or four years, I've been completely addicted to soft drinks. I know that that doesn't sound like a big deal to you, but I'm not a coffee drinker. And I have it in my mind that because I don't drink coffee, Coca-Cola, Red Bull, things like that are okay. And I've tried over the years to quit. And finally, four days ago, I said, God, I can't do this on my own. I'm used to praying for the big things. I'm used to praying for high school students to catch on fire for Christ. I'm used to praying for our church and for our community that we would experience a revival. I'm used to driving through Roanoke and seeing homeless people and and just praying for their situation. I'm used to praying for the big stuff. But now I'm praying that I can kick soft drinks. And the question there is, is can I change by myself? There are some things in life that we just can't do alone. Maybe your addiction isn't soda. Maybe your addiction is gossip. You can't go a day without it. You're totally addicted to it, and it's destroying your character. Maybe there's somebody in here who's addicted to work. I talk to people all the time who are so involved with their jobs that they're never home at night to tuck their kids into bed.